Good morning, good morning, and happy Friday. Happy Friday indeed. You know what time it is. It is prayer time Friday. So if you are joining me for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dahlia, and I have been preaching the word on this channel. Remember to like the video and to share the video with someone else. You want to encourage other people, other saints. You don't know how someone is feeling. Don't assume. So when you hear this message and it blesses you, send it to someone else and let, let it be a blessing to them. Also, this is your way of evangelizing along with me and blessing and edifying the believers, okay? So remember to share the video with other people. But it's prayer time Friday. And you know what I always say about prayer. Prayer is not a monologue. Don't drop off your list and run off into the sunset. You've got to wait to hear what God has to say because prayer is a dialogue. When you speak, then you better wait. Wait on the Lord. Hear what the word. Take the Bible with you. Hear what the word of God has to say about your situation. You don't need no lying prophets because half of them are not from God. They're not living right. And they weren't sent by God. So if you have to pay somebody to give you a so-called word, then that word did not come from God. You can't buy the gift of God. You can't buy God's word from anyone. And when people say otherwise, I'm telling you, that's why you have to know the word. In the lesson on Monday, if you, I post on this channel on Mondays and Fridays, right? And in the lesson in 1 John, I read Philippians 1, 9 that says, Beloved, above all, I pray that your love will abound in knowledge and in all judgment. You have got to get into this word. That's how you learn how to pray. That's how you know how to pray. And that's how you know how to judge what's coming across these pulpits because if you look around us there's so much coming out of the pulpits these days that's not of God it might be dressed up and pretty and all fancy it's not of God but people don't know the word the saints don't know the word so they run with anything and many of them already have itching ears so that makes it worse you've got to know the word and the scripture i'm going to go into into today is going to show you a man who knew his god knew his covenant knew the word of god and because he knew the word of god he could then pray and he caused and led the people into he, a, a great victory without knowing the word of God, without knowing his covenant and without knowing his rights that God has bestowed upon them. What God has given them, he would have what lost the battle and he would have been he would come to utter destruction. For the believers today, the Bible said we have better promises than this man that we're going to read about. It says we have better promises, better. We have a better covenant built on better promises. Therefore, whatever God has promised us is already yes and amen. So what is the problem? The problem is the saints don't know the word. Number two, the saints don't pray. Nobody likes to pray. I say this all the time. If you go to a church on any given prayer night, you will see the same faithful few. Why? Because everybody's busy doing everything else. We like to prioritize other things but prayer. Just come to Sunday morning where the singing everybody's there have a little cantata everybody's there oh but make a call for prayer and you know you see them coming in one by one until it trickles down and it's only the faithful few that's why when people got ca catastrophes and calamities now they want everybody to pray them out of their pits and they have not built a prayer life come on people you've got to build a prayer life and this story is going to encourage you and help you and and kind of give you the direction that you need let's get into it <clears throat> i don't want to be too long you know us preachers and pastors we we are very garrulous we chat we can talk and so we're in second chronicles again this is one of my favorite favorite uh books and he in verse uh 17 let's go to verse 17 okay it says, this is the prophet of God speaking. And he says, you will not need to fight in this battle. 
position yourselves. I want you to listen to what the prophet is saying, okay? He says, you don't need to fight in this battle. I'm going to tell you the story in a little bit. He says, but position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you? O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear, do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And the Bible said, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And this is a story that's familiar to the church or to Christendom, where Jehoshaphat, who was king, heard news came to him that all the nations, because you see, people are watching you. You might think that nobody's watching little old you, simple old you, you know, humble, humble little you, but there's always somebody somewhere watching you. And they were watching King Jehoshaphat. Because the Bible said he was a good king. He, the, his wealth increased and he was spreading. He was growing. I mean, the man was like the wealth doctor. He was just spreading his, his, his wealth all around. And the other nations saw that. But each nation could not defeat him on their own. So if they came after him, he would crush them. So what they did, right, they all got together and form an alliance. And that's the only way they could defeat Jehoshaphat or defeat Judah. So word came to him and saying, King, all these nations got together and they are building an army. You know, they formed alliance and they're coming after you. It's you they want to take down. And so Jehoshaphat was like, but wait a minute, if all these countries come together against us, they're going to beat us. We don't have the resources to fight all those countries all at once. What did he do? He did the only thing he knew to do. He went to God, but he didn't go to God just, you know, by happenstance, he didn't go to God out of lack of anything to do. He went to God full of knowledge. And like I said in the opening of the other lesson, Paul the Apostle says, my beloved friend, I pray above all that your love will abound, that your love will be rooted in knowledge and in all judgment. This king had knowledge. He had knowledge of the covenant that God made with his fathers and his father's father. So he went back to the covenant. He went into prayer, but he didn't go into prayer blind like some of us Christians. He didn't go into prayer and, oh, uh, you know, not knowing what to say in des desperation. We all get desperate, but he didn't go without knowledge. He went into prayer to God. And I want you to hear some of what he prayed. He says, listen, he said, are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants from before us? He says, your people is Israel, meaning us. We are your people. He says, you said, watch this now. He's quoting God's covenant. In other words, he's quoting God's word. And if he didn't have it in his heart, if he didn't know it, he couldn't quote it. And that's why I say to you, you've got to study God's word. And when you know the word of God, you pray differently. You'll approach God differently. You will approach God with confidence. And many times the reason why people don't like to pray is because their prayer life is mm, not so great because they don't know the word. So they don't approach God with confidence and they don't bring their prayer in faith. Remember, the Bible said, without faith, you cannot please God. And those who come to God must believe that he is. And if you don't believe, then you, your prayers aren't going anywhere. You have to believe. And so he came to God with knowledge. He came to God knowing what the covenant was. And many times you have to know the word of God, know your rights, know what God has afforded you in his word. And God does not go against his word, as you're going to see in this text. He doesn't go against his word. 
Listen to how he went to God. He went to God in confidence. You can be humble, but you can go to God with confidence. You know, you're not going in arrogance. He was humble because he went into prayer because he needed God's help. But he reminded God, he says, are you not our God who drove out? In other words, are you not God who gave us the victory and gave our fathers the victory before? Aren't you that same God? And he says, you said, if a disaster come upon us, whether it's a sword, whether it's judgment, whether it's pestilence or whether it's famine, if we will stand for the temple and stand in your presence, for your name is in the temple, and if we would cry out unto you in our affliction, you will hear us and you will save us. You see that? He knew the covenant. He knew what God has promised. It's no different with us. <clears throat> we have a better covenant with better promises. So why aren't we coming before God? Because we don't know the covenant and we don't know the promises. That's why. So you find in church all these fake prophets coming, taking your money and telling you lies, lies upon lies. You have people giving these lying, demonic, whatever they are, thousand dollars, a hundred dollars, fifty dollars to get some made up word. All because they're too lazy to get into the Bible. They're too lazy to get on their knees before God. This king was one breath away from being annihilated and destroyed because all the other nations form an alliance against him. Think about that. What are you going through? What diagnosis did you get? Who, what, what's going on on that job? What difficult circumstances are you facing that you need God? If God doesn't step in, everything will crumble. You've got to know the word. You've got to come to God in prayer. You cannot leave God for last resort. And what a lot of saints do, they leave God as a last resort. You know, well, we'll deal with God if you know. It doesn't work like that. You've got to have God every day in your life. You've got to have God. You've got to build a prayer life. You've got to come before him. And you've got to know your covenant. God gave us a covenant through Jesus Christ. And so this king, he now, when he went to God, he prayed this prayer. And when he prayed the prayer, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord got on the prophet. And the prophet came with a word from God and says, you won't need to fight this battle. This battle ain't yours no more. Why? Did he knew that before? No. When they were coming against him, they were coming. Those nations were coming. But he went back to the word of God. He went back to what God has spoken through the prophets before that and through his fathers and his father's father. And it says, wait a minute, God, you said, you said if trouble come, comes upon us, whether it's a famine in the land, whether it's disease in the land, whether it is judgment, whether it is a sword, he said, if we turn towards the temple, because your name is on the temple now, if we turn to the temple and we come, call, come to you and cry out to you in our affliction, you will hear and you will help us. He said, Lord, now here we are, your people. Here we are, and we need your help. Can you come to God honestly and, and say what Jesus said and come and say, Lord, you sent Jesus to die for my sin. I need your help. Can you come and pray from your heart like that? You've got to know God. You have to have relationship. And this king had a relationship with God, you see. That's the difference. But many people don't build on their relationship. You say, well, pastor, how do you build? You build your relationship through prayer and through the word of God. You've got to study the word of God. The apostle encouraged us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, not man. 
if you had to study to show your proof yourself approved unto man you'll get nowhere because you know they cherry pick they have their little groupies you know when you go to these little churches these especially ethnic a church that's very ethnic cent, cent central or sex centric forgive me i'm tired um you know they cherry pick their little groupies but when you study to show yourself approved unto God, don't worry about the preacher and all that. You study to show yourself approved unto God. God is the one that approves all of that. And when he sees your heart, not man. So don't do it for man because you got to go and you could put your hand up in the class and answer a question. Mm -mm. You got to get it in your heart first. And so when he prayed this to God, God spoke and says, you don't have to fight this battle. This battle is no longer yours. Hallelujah. This battle is no longer yours. Guess why? Because he prayed the covenant. He knew his rights. He knew what God had promised. And so he called on the promise. He says, wait a minute now. You said. Now, he, he, they would have annihilated him. He had no way. He had no power. He had no resources to fight these nation that has what a, a, a form allegiance against him he didn't have it and god says oh oh this is my fight you don't have to fight but one thing i want you to do watch this now god says position yourself huh uh, uh, uh. it's not your fight but you still got to position yourself and that's where we miss it we think we can skip off and go, you know, sip tea and eat bonbons. No, you've got to position yourself. You want God to do something for you and you pray to God and you seek God in prayer and fasting. You don't just go sit on the sidelines. You say, God, now what is my part? What do I have to do? You've got to position yourself. He says, I want you to position yourself now. I want you to stand still because I want you to see my salvation. But you've got to position yourself because there's something you got to do. And so the Bible said the king bowed his face to the ground. Have your face touched the ground lately? Have your knees touched your carpet lately? Did your knees ever meet your carpet? Did your knees ever meet your church floor? Hmm? Did your knees ever meet the pillows in the church? He bowed himself. This is after God gave him the answer. And the Bible said not only did he bow, but the people followed him as well because they're watching their king. They're watching to see what the king does. And they bowed along with him and they worship God. See, when you put your petition before God and God gave you his word on it, yes, and God gave you his word on it. The next thing for you to do is to bow down and worship him. That's why I say to you when you pray, don't just get up and leave your laundry list like a Christmas list and walk off into the sunset and go on about your business. You've got to bow down now and worship him after you've prayed. After you've prayed and you've given God his word back to him. You said, wait a minute, God, you said this in your word. You said, but by your stripes I'm healed. You said that you were wounded for my transgression so I made a mistake and you you were wounded for my transgression you were bruised for my iniquity now Lord you've got to forgive me for this that's his word and then after you pray this word and you know his word is true because it will not return to him void then it's time to bow down and position yourself and worship him don't just get up and walk away he deserves the worship he deserves the praise but many just walk away, you know, drop off the list, drop off the dirty laundry and just be on your way. Mm -mm. This king had a relationship and he knew how to knew what the covenant was and he knew what to do. And so he obeyed God. He positioned himself. Are you in position today? Are you in position today? Because you can't just throw out a request. And some of you have some big requests. You want a house. You want a car. You want a job. You want God to help you with your finances. You want God to help you with your health. You, Whatever it is, you've got to position yourself in him. You don't have to go buy a word. Mm, no. All you got to do is pick up this Bible. And begin to read the covenant that Jesus made with us.
In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, the apostle here speaking. And in chapter 6, verse 18, he says this, praying always. Now, the apostle is not making any mistakes. He said, praying always. You got to pray always. Some religion, they pray three, four, five times a day. If the sun points this way, they pray that way. The sun goes that way, they pray that way. They pray all day. In some religion, they meditate and they don't know God. But only the Christians, I find, that get lazy can't pray for five minutes. You know, one of the things, you know, everybody has their idiosyncrasies and whatever, everything, you know, is whatever. But one of the things I'll never understand is you come into church to worship and people will sit, believers will sit in the church on their phone and the worship is going on and this is them in the phone. They can't wait 20 minutes. They are on the phone texting or reading something in the house of worship. Then when calamity strikes them, everybody ought to come bail you out. It irritates me. One time we're in church and we're praising the Lord. It was worship. And the pastor was ministering, calling out, praying for people. And one of the singers, you know, you got to watch them little entertainers, singers, was just on the phone. And they were in front of me. And so as I'm praising the Lord and I just, and this, and he's on the phone texting during the service when the Holy Spirit is moving. I have no words for people like that. That's disrespectful. But then when trouble comes, they want God to come right away. Don't ever wonder why God don't come in certain circumstances because people, they have duller hearing. They just do what they want. And it's like when you try to tell them, oh, you're too, you're doing too much. It don't take all that. And whatever they were texting were more important than what the pastor was saying or what the spirit of the Lord was saying. The apostle says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. But I just wanted you to hear the part where he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Let me break it down for you. You've got to get down and dirty. You've got to get down like this king. You've got to put your face to the ground and worship God. He says, praying with all prayer and supplication. Praying always. This king had to get before God. And when God stepped in, the Bible said he didn't stop there. He bowed down to the ground. His face hit the ground and he began to worship God. When was the last time you worshiped God? When was the last time you bowed down and worshiped God just because? Is it always when you want something? That's the other thing. Many people only come to God when they want something. And when they get it, they disappear and you don't see them again till Easter or Christmas Sunday. You know, those holiday churchgoers, they come on Easter, <clears throat> they come on Christmas and they come on New Year's Eve until they want something again from God. That's not how a believer is supposed to live. You have got to get the word in your heart like this king. This king, when he was surrounded, there was no way for him to win this battle. He could not win this battle at all. But he knew someone who could win. He knew his God. He knew the God of his father and he knew the God that was in his heart. And so he went to him and he said, look here, father. You are God. You are the same God. And we can go to God and say, look, you are the same God of Jehoshaphat. Now the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ. You did all these mighty works over there. Now, God, you sent Jesus who did a mightier work on the cross so that we can live. Now, Father, I bring this petition before you and you bring it before God, whatever it is, whatever it is. I don't care what you're believing for. Ask God about it, but you see when he gives you the answer, like this king, receive it and then worship him. You can't ask God for something that he didn't authorize, people. Come on now. And you can't fault God for not giving you that lady's husband or that man's wife. You can't fault God because that house didn't belong to you. You can't fault God because you didn't get promotion. That position was not for you. He knows what's best for you. But many times we just want what we want. We don't want to wait on God. Oh, I just want to get married because I want to have sex. You didn't wait on God because then the sex is disappointing. Oops, I said it. You marry God because you just want security. Oops, the man is broke. He's in debt. Now, you've in, now you're going to get that debt passed, passed on to you. I just want to get married because I want companionship. Oops, you got married and that man is cheating on you left, right, and center. He ain't home. Half the time he ain't home. Mm -hmm. And you got to work to look after him and support him. You got married because, you know, I'm getting old and I need to get married. And you got married to that man. And oops, here come five children out of the woodworks because he forgot to tell you he got five children with five different baby mamas and they all on child support. And now that's coming out of your check. And some of them want to come live up in your house because your house is so clean. We do these things and then we want God to come and clean up our mess. It don't work like that. You've got to know the covenant of your God. So whatever you're asking God, make sure when you ask, you wait for the answer. And when you get the answer, whether it's what you want or what you, you didn't expect, you receive it because God knows best. He knows what's best for you. He knows what's good to you and what will be good for you. Believe his word. This king believed God. Now, Watch the answer that God gave him. God says, you don't need to fight. I would have been like, what God, what? The whole gang is coming to fight me. They got guns. And you're telling me I don't need to fight? This ain't my battle. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Many of us would go into a panic and we wouldn't receive this word. We would go get guns and call our neighbors, our cousins and our cousins' cousins to come fight for us. God told this king, Ah, uh, you don't need to fight. This battle is not yours. But you see, he, he could receive the answer because he knew. Watch what he prayed. Listen, he said, aren't you the, the same God? Aren't you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of the land before Israel? He knew God. He knew all the things that God did. So he could take God at his word. You see that? He knew that God defeated armies upon armies before. He knew that. He knew that. So when God said to him, oh, you don't need to fight. What, do, what you talking about, Willis? God says, you don't need to fight. What you talking about? There are armies coming. But he knew God. He knew his God. Because God did it before. So he accepted God's word and he worshiped. So when God gives you the answer, you've got to receive it and worship him because it will be good for you. Don't worry about that little man you want. If it ain't him, God got a better man. Don't worry about that woman you want. God got a better one. Don't stress over it. God will bring you the right one who'll be good to you. Oh, honey, he will kiss the ground you walk on. I mean, you would just be like, ah, and that woman, honey, that you want that wife, God will bring you a good wife. She'll cook for you. Oh, you get a pot belly in two months. You love it. You love everything she cook. Cause it's going to be good. And she's going to keep your house clean and take care of your children, you and your children that she gave birth to. Come on now. 
You've got to trust that God knows what's best for you. God came in and saved King Jehoshaphat and the entire nation of Judah or tribe of Judah, I should say. Save them. They didn't have to lift a finger to fight anybody. And in your situation, you don't have to lift a finger if you trust God. If you pour it out, pour it all out on him, pour it out, give it to Jesus. The old saints used to say, come on, leave it at the altar. Pour it out on God. He can take it. Your situation is not new to him. He can take it, whatever it is, tell it to him and then let him fix it. Because maybe he got to fix you. Sometimes he's got to fix us, you know, because our perception is wrong. Our, our, our request is wrong. It's off the chart. And so he got to fix it up a little bit and put it this way. But whatever it is, trust God. He is on your side. God is on your side. But you got to know your covenant. You got to know your rights. And how you know your covenant and your rights is by knowing the word of God, taking this Bible, studying it. Come on Mondays with me as I go through 1 John, getting it after the, the, the video, get in the word and read it again and read it again till you get it in your heart. Because when you're praying, you find yourself now you're getting to know God and the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you and you begin to pray right you begin to desire the right things. Your desires will be in line with what God has for you. See, when you got the word in you, you want the right thing. You want the right man and you will want the right woman. You will want the right job. You will want the right house. You will want the right car. When God's word is in you, you will want the right things. That's how it works. But when you don't have his word and you're, you're stuck in your own way and you think you're your own boss and you know it all because you got a little degree, a little education, you know, you got a little money because you work and you made a little money. You think you're all that now, so you don't need God. That's when people get in trouble when they get out. But when you've got God's word in you and you're in prayer and you're in the word, you will want the right thing. So know the word, know your covenant, know your rights in Christ. That way, when you come and ask, oh, you can ask like Jehoshaphat and God will answer and hear you. And he will say to you, baby, you don't need to fight. I got this. Amen. Oh, we have a better covenant, people. We have a better covenant and we have better promises, better than Jehoshaphat. Now, come on now. We got a promise better than Jehoshaphat. Come on, pray, pray. And pray some more. The apostle said, pray always with all prayer. Pray. Amen. So I hope this encouraged you to build your prayer life, to grow in the Lord and to study the word. Remember, share this word with somebody. Share this message. Share the um, this video. And don't forget to give it a like. I, they, they keep reminding me to say that. Give it a like. But share it so other people can be blessed by the word. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remember, go with God and continue to be a blessing because you are blessed to be a blessing. Amen.